<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who have experienced unexplained events in the woods, deep forests, countryside, etc., what did you see out there? I grew up in southern Ohio, where there are seas of wooded areas. At the time, both of my parents worked, so I would spend the days at my grandparents' house. They lived in a country or wooded area, miles upon miles from anything else. My grandpa had a workshop out back from their house, and he would spend most of the day working out there. I was his shadow, so of course I would tag along. One normal seeming day, I was behind his workshop, playing in some sand that he had. Behind his workshop, there is an opening to a path that leads into the woods. As I was playing with my Batman toys, I saw a woman standing at the opening of the woods who I had never seen before. She was dressed in the style of an old-time Mennonite, possibly Amish, woman. It seemed like she was from the late 1800s to the early 1900s. I remember her holding a basket. She told me to follow her into the woods. Being a four-year-old and having a sense of wonder, I did as she asked. I remember following through the opening, and then everything after that is blank, up until I was found by the search dogs hanging off a steep cliff that would have surely killed me. To add to the ending there, my grandparents obviously noticed I was gone, so they called the police. I was missing for several hours, but a police search dog found me entangled in a thorn bush, hanging off the side of a dangerously large cliff. My mom quit her job on the spot and became a stay-at-home mom for the remainder of mine and my brother's childhoods. I have always wondered who or what that woman could have been, what her intentions were, and what had happened in that blank spot of my memory. I hike all over the knee. Especially New England. I have seen some really strange things over the past 10 years. I saw a hooded figure in a forest near the CT River. Two years ago. Very tall. Thin. Black robe with hood. Huge, dark eyes it stepped out from behind a tree and stared at me. I froze. Then, in my most idiotic way, I screamed, I see you. I see you. And went to make a cell phone video. Poof. It was gone. Damn, it freaked me out. Those huge, dark eyes no whites. I got really scared. Not ashamed to admit it either. I began to hear footsteps in the bushes all around me. I felt like something bad was about to happen to me. So I bolted like an Olympic sprinter. For two miles, I huffed and puffed with my heart pounding until I came to an opening out of this forest. I felt the whole way like something was keeping pace with me too. This happened around 3 p.m. It was a day out. So I got a good look at this thing. I feel like I stumbled on its sacred grounds or something like that. I was off trail. Wandering and thinking when this being just stepped out from behind a huge old tree, I first thought it was human. But its eyes made me realize what I was seeing was not of this world. I did not hike for over 9 months after that happened. And I am still affected by this encounter. I am very uneasy now in the woods. I feel like this thing in a robe stole what I once loved so much to do, hike daily and off trail. Now I am constantly scanning my environment when I hike. Plus, I can't go deep into the woods anymore. I honestly feel too much fear. When I was little, around 6 or 7 years old, I used to go with my family to a house in the woods in West Virginia. I loved it, from the view to the atmosphere. It should be noted that the closest house was 20 minutes away. We went very often, to which I considered myself a boy scout. I loved to go in little by little and no small shortcuts and others. I liked to climb trees and see the sunsets and how the sun faded, until one day it was no more than 5 minutes to the house. When I was up in my favorite tree, I heard some branches breaking, but very slowly, not so far away, I heard something big. I heard my mother call me by my name, which is very strange of her, at least she does it when she is angry. I was excited at first, since I wanted to show him how I climbed trees, which was my favorite. The emotion ran through me until he called me again, but this time in a stronger tone. An instinct took over. It is as if my subconscious says, come down and go home. Every time it was heard louder and closer, it was as if the sound came from everywhere. When I lowered my little legs from the tree, I heard the most horrible scream that I will never forget. I heard a twisted scream from something saying my name. There, I ran as much as I could to the house. While I was moving away, many branches were heard breaking as if something was following me, until the sound stopped and followed that or something letting out a very loud scream like that of a bear combined with a lion. When I got to the house, my mother saw me with a scared face, and she said, your pants were pissed, and I said, did you call me? She said no. From there, I told her that at first she did not believe me so much, but when I grew up, she told me that very strange things happened out there. Since that time, I have never climbed a tree or entered a forest alone. 
Sometimes we talk to my mom about this. My husband and I live in a very rural area in the southeast US, surrounded by woods on all sides. We don't have neighbors for probably about half a mile to a mile on either side. My husband and I had just gotten into a fight over something stupid, so I went to take a walk with my dog, a German Shepherd, to cool off. It was dusk, foggy, and quickly becoming dark, but I knew these woods like the back of my hand. It had probably been about 30 minutes. I was calming down, letting Maul, named Firefly, play around in the leaves, and getting ready to turn back because it was getting quite dark. His ears perked up when he heard the loud crunching of leaves, and he stared at a dark shadow we both saw moving in the distant trees. Assuming it was a deer, I let out a sharp whistle and two distinct blasts to alert it to my presence and possibly startle it away, some deer can get mean or territorial if you get too close to them. It's a whistle my family would use to get each other's attention that kind of sounds like a whippoorwill call. It's important to note that this is a very unique sound. The shadow stopped moving towards my whistle. That's when I simultaneously noticed four things. 1. The shadow of this deer was very strange, kind of hunched and stout with no neck, and its front legs were bowed out to the side. 2. The hair on Mal's back started rising, and a growl started rumbling in his chest. He's never growled at deer before. And 3. A terrible, gut-wrenching feeling of dread washed over me like ice, and I realized the woods were perfectly quiet. No insects, no birds, no wind. 4. It was looking directly at us. And then we heard my whistle return to me. There were two distinct blasts in the same song and pitch, but it sounded like it was buzzing. The closest thing I can describe it as is humming and whistling at the same time. Maul and I had the same idea at the same time, and that was to nope the duck out of there, and we bolted back to the house. I have never run so fast in my life, and when we got back, we both flew inside, and I bolted the door. For the rest of the night, he stood at the door, fur raised and ears up, listening. I have no idea what that was, but needless to say, I forgot about that fight with my husband. I was bushwalking along a track at Mount Kira with three friends a few years ago. At this time, we were about halfway up the mountain. Rather than backtrack down the track, we decided we'd just turn off the track and go bushwhacking until we found the track again further down the mountain. After doing this for about 15 minutes, we found some particularly thick poison ivy. After a bit of hacking and slashing, we found that a large tree branch had fallen in the middle of the ivy recently, so we could make it through the ivy without the hack and slash if we walked over it. So there we were, trying to walk over it. Two of my friends were in front of me, one behind. We all heard some movement a short distance behind us. I turned around the fastest, I have pretty quick reactions, and saw what appeared to be a person running. The thing is, though, that it was completely black and had no shadow. It was basically a living shadow. I only saw it for maybe two seconds before it was gone, running away into the bush. Although I remember it all really clearly, I think time must have slowed as the adrenaline kicked in. I asked my friend behind me if he had seen it. He looked scared and worried and said no. I asked my friend directly in front of me. He, too, had seen nothing. I wanted to run after it and see where it went, but my friends were keen at this stage to continue on home at a faster pace. My father told me a story many times when I was growing up about something that happened to him, and I know that he believes it to be true. He's not a very superstitious person, or whatever you want to call it, pretty analytical. Dad was five years old and camping with his Boy Scout troop. They sent everyone for firewood, it was dusk, so he went off on his own, a little further than the other kids, because he wanted to gather more firewood than anyone else. He got far enough away that nobody else had picked through the fallen wood and started gathering. Along his way, he went until he almost stepped on a tiny tribe of Indians, in full regalia, around a tiny fire, singing and dancing in a circle. He said they were three inches tall, and they didn't pay him any mind as he crouched down to watch them. He looked over their little ceremony for long enough that the scout leader started calling his name, and he grabbed his wood pile and ran back to camp. A friend and I had a weird experience when we were teens. We had just dropped off a friend of ours and were headed back home. My friend was driving his car, and I was a passenger. We were on a long, dark stretch of road in rural Michigan, and as we crested a hill, both of us noticed a teenage girl walking along the side of the road towards us, on the passenger side of the road. We were surprised to see someone on such a secluded stretch of road at 2A.M. My friend said, did you see that? I said I did. He decided to turn around just 50 feet or so past her. She was nowhere to be found. It was open barren fields on both sides of the road. Explaining why he turned around, my friend told me that he'd seen her face and it wasn't right, he said she was wearing a grin that was three times larger than it normally should be. I didn't see her face, 
but we both recalled what she was wearing when we compared notes while hightailing at home. This was 40 plus years ago, and having seen that friend for the first time in 10 years, guess what the first thing was that we discussed? When I was a young girl, maybe around 9 or 10, I was traveling with my dad to California for a family vacation. We were driving through New Mexico during the night because he wanted me to see the stars when it was dark out. There weren't hardly any cars on the road, but we decided to exit on some random exit so we could actually get out of the car and look up at the sky. Well, we get out of the car, and it's so quiet that you can barely see anything except for the stars. Once my eyes acclimated to the darkness, we seemed to be near a clearing with a bunch of trees and a really large ranch house or small factory or something like that. Not a lot of trees, but like a small, sparse tree farm or something to that extent. Well, my dad had actually brought a telescope, so he started to take it out of the back of the truck and set it up. Meanwhile, I was still just kind of staring up at the stars on the other side of the truck, and I thought I heard something like a faint laugh or something. I listened really hard, and I heard it again out towards the trees. I kind of brushed it off, thinking it was just a fox or another animal that makes freaky noises at night. Well, I start to walk back around the truck, and I see something move out of the corner of my eye. I couldn't really make out what it was, so I kind of walked a little towards the area to get away from the shine from the truck's headlights. Well, once my eyes adjusted, I saw a girl my age who looked so much like me. Same haircut, same facial shape, and we were both wearing shorts and a t-shirt. She was right outside the tree line, and she was waving at me and laughing like she was expecting me or something. But then it was really weird because, all of a sudden, she started doing somersaults on the ground. She would do a somersault, stand up, wave at me, then do another somersault, and so on. It was really odd. She then looked like she was trying to dance or do a little jig here and there, and then would laugh and wave in motion for me to come over. Then somersault again, then dance, the wave, repeat. She didn't say anything, but she kept motioning for me to come down. About that time, my dad finished setting up the telescope and yelled for me to come over. So I waved back to her and started walking back towards the truck. Before I rounded the front of the truck, though, I looked back, and she was running towards the truck with this crazy look on her face. So immediately I start screaming at my dad about it and dragging him over to where he can see her. But I don't see anything. She's not there anymore. At that point, I think I started to cry and beg him if we could just leave and drive somewhere else, because I was really scared. Thankfully, he said okay and told me to get in the car while he packed up the telescope. So I immediately got in the car, locked my door, and peered out my window to see if I could see her again. Nothing, thank goodness. About a minute passes before I hear my dad shut the back hatch, but he quickly runs in the car and shuts the door like he was in a hurry. I asked what was wrong, and he was like, there's a coyote out there. He started the car, and I remember thinking how relieved I was to be leaving, and I finally felt safe. Well, as we start going, this lone ducking coyote starts running alongside our truck. I mean, aren't coyotes supposed to be scared of people and avoid things like that? It didn't look starving or crazy or anything, it was just kind of running alongside our truck. My dad was just going on how cool it was to see a coyote up close like that, but the whole thing just feels weird and creepy. And once we reached a certain speed and got to the ramp of the highway, it just stopped, sat down on the road, and stared at the truck while we sped off. It was easily one of the scariest things that has ever happened to me. I know I saw that girl and wasn't imagining it. It has affected me throughout my life because I can't travel long distances at night. I have massive anxiety attacks otherwise. And I had nightmares about the whole situation for a few years, and I still have one from time to time, and I'm 24 now. This was actually rather cathartic to write. When I worked a grave shift, my sleep schedule was all screwed up. On my off nights, I wouldn't go back to a normal sleep schedule, I would find myself awake at all hours of the morning and night. One night, I went for a walk on a nearby gravel road. The road was a single lane of gravel in the middle of a swamp. On one stretch of road, cattails grew about 7 feet high. I was on this stretch when, out of nowhere, this thick fog rolled in. All I could see was about 15 feet ahead of and behind me and walls of cattails on either side of me. While the fog was thick, I could still see the stars and the full moon above me. So as I was walking along, thinking it was the coolest and creepiest thing in the world, the way the fog seemed to come out of nowhere, I heard something rustling in the cattails. Something large. In true horror movie fashion, I thought it would eventually go away. Instead of turning back towards home and the relative safety of the paved road, I headed further down the gravel road and deeper into the swamp. The rustling kept pace with me. Now I was getting the creeps. I stopped, and the rustling stopped. I walked three or four steps, 
and the rustling kept pace. So I finally turned back towards home. I was walking back to the main road, and whatever it was was keeping pace. Finally, I stopped. I picked up a medium-sized rock and tossed it where I thought the noise was coming from. And the howling started. A lot of it. Apparently, what I had been hearing was a pack of about 5 to 10 coyotes keeping pace with me in the dark. And again, against my better judgment, I took off running. I sprinted the half mile down the gravel road towards the paved road, and I didn't stop until I was standing on the yellow line in the middle of the road, no traffic at that hour, so this was not dangerous. I turned around and looked back, and in some weird fluke, the fog lifted and I could see the whole length of the road. There was no trace of fog and no sign of coyotes. At that point, I made a beeline home. I was a sophomore in high school when this happened. I haven't gone back. It's midsummer in New England, and my best friend, let's call him Andy, and I are hanging out. I live on conservation land, so aside from the houses at the very front, there are no other developments or woodland that spans acres and acres. The state put down some paths, so I suggested that we go exploring. We geared up, I brought my pocket knife, sprayed down with bug spray, and headed out of my backyard. We hadn't explored too much, but I knew the area somewhat well, so we decided to go to hell with the trails. We're going to be real men and forge our own path. We enter the woods, thickly forested with pine, maple, and oak trees, and make notches in the trees on the way so we can find our way back. It's around noon, so I'm not too worried about it getting dark, after all, the sun sets around 8pm in the summer, but just in case. We walk deeper and deeper into the woods for about 15 minutes, and the forest is alive. Bugs, frogs, birds, everything in this forest is loud and slightly irritating, but it's nice to take in the sights and sounds. Soon, we stumble upon a peculiar scene. A perfect circle is probably 20 feet in diameter and spans from the ground all the way to the sky. I'm perplexed, but Andy is curious, so we decide to go in. The first thing I noticed is that the overgrown weeds and grass that surround a stop at the perimeters. All vegetation past the line is dead, not bare, but dead, crunching under our feet. I don't just mean the grass, but the tree limbs that extend in are also bare. Leaves down the branch until it crosses the line. Being in the middle of summer, nothing should be dead, and I've never seen a branch behave like that. I am feeling extreme unease. I turn to Andy and ask him if he feels uneasy. He says he feels like we're being watched. I agree. It's then that we notice the strangest senses. The entire forest has gone silent. Not in rest but in what feels like suspense. I'm feeling very uneasy now, and I know that we need to leave. We run out of there following our tree marks, and when we get back to my house, the forest is alive. Ever since then, every summer and every winter, a snarl of branches, sometimes leafed, sometimes not, reveals our path through the forest. I swear that whatever was watching us from that circle peers through and wants us to come back. So this happened about 13 years ago. My sister and I used to attend a camp in the crown land of central Alberta every summer throughout our childhood. I became a junior leader this year, which meant I got to sleep in a cabin with the other two junior leaders, and for the first time we had it all to ourselves. My sister was staying in a cabin with her best friend, we'll call them Julie and Liz, respectfully, and a few other girls. The last night of camp, as everyone was venturing to the wash house from their cabins, Liz was standing outside, just watching the other campers go about their nighttime routine and enjoying the last half hour of twilight before the sky grew completely dark. As she stood there, Liz noticed someone else standing about 10 meters in front of my cabin. It being twilight, she couldn't really make out features, but she thought it looked like her junior leader, so she left to go talk to her. As she approached this person, however, it became very clear that it was not her junior leader at all. The figure was tall and very lanky, and as she drew closer, she realized it had a huge head, almost like an alien from Star Wars, her description. Finally, she noticed that the head was turned as if it were looking at her, but she couldn't make out facial features of any kind, at which point she freaked out and headed back to the cabin. Later, as my fellow junior leaders and I were making our rounds to the cabins, saying one final good night to all the campers, we came to my sister and Liz's cabin, only to find my sister crying on her bunk, with Liz talking to her in whispers. I asked Julie what was wrong, but she refused to answer me, so I moved on. A few days later, I found out what had happened. After Liz had seen the humanoid-like figure, she went off and did something else while my sister got ready for bed. At some point, she looked out the window in front of their bunk bed and saw something in front of it. When she looked closer, she realized she was staring at a faceless, humanoid-like figure that was standing on their porch, looking directly in at her. This disturbed her more than it had her friend, and she ran to her bunk and began to cry from fear, 
which was why she was still crying a few minutes later when we junior leaders showed up. It was one of those really dark nights with cloud cover and no moonlight. I had my dog with me, and she started acting nervous. I admit I have never seen her act like this, but it didn't bother me too much. I started to get a kind of dreadful feeling in my gut out of nowhere. I can't explain why at all. Usually, something has to be causing this feeling. I was ready to get out of there now and started packing things up in my tent. It got so bad that I thought to myself that I would leave everything and come back in the daytime with a friend and grab my stuff. I grabbed my flashlight and pistol, which I carry with me, and opened the tent. My dog was in the back corner and wouldn't come out. I looked outside, and I saw a huge figure walking maybe 50 yards from us. I swung my flashlight to get a better look, and it was gone. This thing was very tall and scared me into closing the tent with my pistol in my hand. I was up all night, and every now and then I could hear something very close to the tent, but I never messed with the tent. As soon as it was light, I picked up my dog and pretty much ran out of there to my truck. I don't think I have ever been that scared. The dog jumped out of my arms and ran beside me to the truck. I don't know what else to say about this, but my stuff was picked up two days later, and nothing messed with it. There were no tracks, but there was a dead deer carcass where I saw it, and it looked like it was stripped clean. Only the tracks around it were deer tracks. Nothing else. I forgot to mention that the sounds throughout the night were like someone banging rocks together. I have never heard or seen anything like this since. This happened eight years ago. So this is my dad's story, and he has told it to me many times over the years. I'm older now, and one night my dad and I had a few drinks by the campfire, and I got really serious and said, did you make up that camping story just to scare me? Be honest, I just gotta know. Then my dad smiled a little and said, I really wish I'd made it up. But it was all true. And it scares me to the core to this day. It's the early 90s, and my dad and his best friend Harry are avid campers. They don't hunt, they just love going to the woods and drinking beer. All they had was a cooler full of beer, their tents, and my dad's handgun, just in case things got crazy, I guess. They head to Big Lake, which is located near Bend, Oregon. They had never camped this early in the year before, April, and they had a hard time just getting their pickup to the base of the mountain, and when they get to the turn of the road, it is blocked off. No one was supposed to go in. Still too much snow. So they ditch the truck and start hiking in. They notice animal tracks in the snow, totally normal, but then they start seeing tracks that look like a person was wading through the snow just like they were. It looks like we may have company. It might be nice, my dad joked. My dad is 6 feet 4 inches, 300 pounds, and a size 14 shoe. He said the tracks looked like someone bigger than him had been walking in, and he said that was a little nerve-wracking. So they set up their camp and everything. Cut to dusk. They are sitting around the campfire, staring at the lake, when they hear the most maniacal laugh you could imagine ringing out over the lake. Filled the whole lake with sound. This goes on for maybe a full 30 seconds, and my dad and Harry are just looking at each other, confused. My dad makes some off-handed jokes about there being a crazy person in the woods. They laugh. Maybe two minutes go by since the sound ended when it starts back up again, but this time it's on the other side of the lake. The opposite side that it came from just moments before. Like I said, it was a big lake, and there was no possible way for someone to get from one side to the other that quickly. This terrible screaming laugh continues like it did before, then silence. This time, my dad and Harry don't look at each other. They are pretending this isn't happening. They sit by the fire for a few more minutes, but soon decide to try to go to sleep. My dad said that was the only time he slept with his gun by his side. He said there was a bad smell that night, but not like farts, more like garbage. They wake up the next day, and there are tracks around the camp. It looks like a big human was trying to sneak around while they were sleeping, but they had not heard anything at all while they were in their tents. They don't even discuss it, they just pack up their things and head out, they were supposed to camp for three nights. My dad has always said, that was a crazy man that could have ripped my head off with his bare hands. Or maybe a Bigfoot. I grew up going to a summer camp in Pennsylvania every year. One year, when I was about 13, I had a strange experience that I still think about from time to time. Every night we played a night game, think man hunt, capture the flag, etc. Everyone, of course, gets really into these games, and everyone in the camp meets before and after the game in the lodge. For these games, everyone would get decked out in all black, camo, face paint, etc. This is relevant. Another relevant detail is that the woods were strictly off limits. This particular night, I can't remember exactly what we were playing, but I'm running around with a friend from my cabin, and we're up on the soccer field, which is lined on two adjoining sides by woods. She points something out to me on the tree line, 
probably 100 yards away. It was a very tall figure that was either dressed in all white or was just white head to toe. We looked at it for a couple seconds and watched it disappear into the woods, then reappear a few yards down the tree line. The next time it appeared, I was hit with this inexplicable dread and fear, I think she was too, but I won't speak for her. I was definitely alone. It disappeared and reappeared in the tree line several times before we decided to run. I can't describe the terror this thing made me feel, no matter how hard I tried to rationalize that it was just a person wearing all white. At the end of the game, the whole camp reassembled in the lodge, and we made a point to look around and see if anyone was wearing all white, and of course no one was even wearing light colors. I've never had any paranormal or unexplainable experiences except for this, and it would be easy for me to dismiss it if it weren't for the height of this thing and the inexplicable dread it made me feel. Living in the Pacific Northwest, one of my favorite pastimes is simply taking a walk in the woods, always with my three dogs. One beautiful day in the spring, around two years ago, I was out with the pups in the state park near my home. Absolutely awesome hiking trails on which you rarely run into another soul, but it does happen, so I wasn't surprised to hear or catch glimpses of what turned out to be a family of four heading my way. So, we are continuing down the trail towards the family, and I am unconcerned about anything but making sure the dogs don't trip anyone. Father walks by and smiles. A girl of about seven walks by and smiles. About ten yards down the trail is a little boy of about nine or ten, and the s hash t hits the fan. The largest dog, who is quite young and seriously the sweetest thing, suddenly panics and starts snarling, barking, and freaking out as though she cannot decide whether to protect me and kill this totally normal looking boy or to crap herself and run. I was obviously shocked and started to grab her while yelling at her to stop. During this, the little boy just stands there with a smile. I guess? Weird, weird looking smile, and his mother stands right behind him quietly. I began to apologize profusely and say that this dog has never behaved like this. I don't know what's going on, and I'm so sorry. I kid you not, the mom just smiles at me, normally, and says, it's okay, dogs tend to react to him like that. Totally shaken, I continue walking down the path one way, they continue on their way, and not 20 more feet, and the chihuahua flops over and has a full-blown seizure, throws up blood, and poos herself. She's okay. I rushed her to the vet thinking she was dead, but by the time I got there, she was beginning to come around. Neither dog has done anything like that day, before or since. I was driving home very late one November evening several years ago. It was frosty, pitch black, and my journey was going to take me about three hours, going from Scarborough to the West Midlands. Part of the route back was a motorway that was unlit except at junctions, between a couple of towns a fair few miles apart. The road is entirely empty except for me, so I'm speeding in an effort to shave some minutes off the journey time. And just in sight of a junction, a figure all dressed in black just runs across the road in front of me. I must have missed him by inches if I hadn't clipped just his coattails. I stood on the brakes and on the icy road, that was not a great idea, but I held onto it and looked back, positively, I was going to see a body in a heap on the other side of the road, my heart about to leap out of my chest. Nothing. Now, I'm a woman on her own around 11 pm, and really, you're not supposed to stop on the motorway, so since I can't see anyone in the road, I go to the junction, go around, and come back the other way. Nothing. I go super slow, I can't see a damn thing. Whatever it was crashed through thick bushes and trees at the side of the road without leaving a mark either. I locked the doors and carried on along the road so I could go around and get back on my way. Whoever or whatever it was, bloody good luck to it being out there in the middle of nowhere in the freezing cold. Slightly less creepy was the owl I saw doing exactly the same thing 20 miles later. When I was 15, I and three friends were walking around the fields behind the backs of our houses. It was about 9 p.m., so it was dark out there. We were getting bored and had decided to head back towards our respective houses. We had nearly left the fields as we crossed a stone bridge that went over the river that ran through the fields. Two of my friends were talking and were a bit ahead of us, while I and my other friend were walking together. Just as we crossed the bridge, we both turned around to see the silhouettes of a man and a dog. When I say silhouette, I mean a literal shadow, like some sort of hole in reality in the shape of a man and a large German shepherd. They were about two meters away, and even in the poor lighting, we should have been able to make out at least some detail of them at that distance. But no, nothing, just void. I and my friend stared for a few seconds before screaming and running away, so I wasn't the only witness to this shadow figure. The story doesn't end there, though. That bridge we crossed? The body of a murder victim was found underneath it about eight years prior. And the river that ran through those fields? 
A man drowned some years ago while trying to save his dog, who had jumped into the water. I was around 9 when I experienced my first cryptid or monster sighting. I was playing in my backyard while my mom planted flowers. We have a small fenced-in area connected to the house, then a small stretch of grass that goes down and up, and then the woods. The woods are a decent size and connect to a large nature preserve, so we sometimes have deer and coyotes in the backyard. I was in the fenced-in area playing with our dogs and digging around in the garden bed, trying to find worms and beetles, when I heard a cat start yelling in the woods. We have a bunch of stray cats in our neighborhood, and they like to hunt and play in the woods, so I didn't think anything of it. However, when a second cat began to yowl, I got worried. I assumed that they were fighting. I started walking up the steps to our porch, where the back door was, so I could get my mom or dad. We had dealt with cats getting hurt before, including losing eyes, ears, and tips of tails in fights, so I wanted to see if either of my parents would go back there to break the fight up, considering that I wasn't allowed back there by myself. I made it about halfway up the stairs when a third cat joined in, and I knew that something was wrong. I slowly made my way back down the steps and watched the woods. A fourth cat began to yowl, and a fifth I stopped counting after that. More and more cats joined in, creating a chorus of horrible noise that scared me badly. Then the dogs started. The neighborhood dogs began to Arkansas they yipped, yowled, and growled right along with the cats. My own dogs freaked out as well, sprinting towards the fence and slamming into it over and over, snarling and barking angrily like someone was right in front of them. I was frozen in my spot, terrified. I waited for my mom to come out and break me from my trance, but she didn't. It was only later that I learned that she had heard the cats and dogs all freaking out but just ignored it, suddenly, all of the animals stopped. It became dead silent. I heard a twig snap to the far right edge of the woods and turned to look. That's when I saw it. All black. Extremely tall. Long arms that almost touched the ground, and long legs. It was unnaturally thin. It slowly walked across the edge of the forest, its arms swinging lazily at its sides. The sticks under it cracked and broke with ease. It lifted its long, thin leg and stepped over a fallen tree, one that, at the time, was higher off the ground than I was tall. Once it got over the log, it turned its head towards me, and I felt like I couldn't breathe. It didn't have a face. It was just a black void. The infinite void of space and time there was nothing there. We stared at each other, me not blinking as its face stayed turned towards me. I wanted to scream, but I couldn't. I couldn't scream. I couldn't move, I couldn't even breathe. The thing finally turned back towards the woods. It took a few more steps, breaking sticks and trampling dead leaves, and disappeared into the trees. Once it was gone, I ran to my mom and told her what had happened. She brushed me off. This is when she told me about hearing the animals but not doing anything. She chalked it up to my imagination. You see, I had gotten really into Bigfoot, watching all of these documentaries and stuff. I wanted to see him so bad. At the time, I got super excited, thinking that I had seen Bigfoot. I told all my friends, and everyone thought it was cool. It wasn't until a few years later that I realized that the creature I saw wasn't Bigfoot. It didn't look anything like what people had said they'd seen. It was faceless. It sunk in that what I had seen that day wasn't some childish urban legend. It was something that I had never seen before or since. I had no idea what I had seen. I had no idea who had seen me. When I first told some people about it in a group chat, they asked me if I had been watching Slenderman videos. I still don't know what I saw practically backwoods since it was in a place nestled in the deep forests of the Cascade Mountains. We were in Skykomish overnight in July 2007 for an event, and there also happened to be some kind of town reunion, so the hotel was full. My youngest was almost one and woke up crying and simply would not stop, which was unusual for her. I grew concerned that she would wake up people in the rooms nearby, so I went out to the car to drive around a bit, thinking that might soothe her to sleep. Skykomish is a tiny mountain town on Highway 2 along the Skykomish River, and the railroad does stop there for freight. It consists of a four-block square of streets, and a bridge crosses over the river to Highway 2, which I would not cross since I didn't want to be on the highway at night. Around and around, slowly and with the window down as it was warm, I drove the square while my baby was quiet, but she would immediately cry if I went back to park at the hotel. Back we went, and the entire time I could hear the frantic cries of birds yet could never see them. This tweeting never stopped, and it didn't sound like bats, yet I still don't know what birds were crying in the dark like that. The strangest part was that I could drive alongside the rail yard in full view of the trains, tracks, and buildings, where I could hear clanging and men talking, which seemed comforting except that I never spotted a single person. There were lights, and train engines were running, yet all this bustling activity never revealed the sight of a single person. 
The worst part for me was that my baby never did go back to sleep until after daybreak, so I was out the entire night among all the unknown noises. As I said, I don't think it was supernatural, but I wish I knew what the sounds were. I thought of it a couple years ago when a young woman named Gia Fuda disappeared there and was feared dead, yet was found eight to nine days later alive, sitting naked next to the river with no memory of where she'd been. I will never stay overnight there again. It's been a while since we did a road trip across the western US, April slash May this year. On our journey, we came across the Shasta Trinity National Forest as we've been heading back to the west coast. Literally in the middle of nowhere, I asked my boyfriend to stop along the highway, as I needed to go for a little pee in the woods. I jumped out of the car and searched for a place where I could do what needed to be done. Meanwhile, my boyfriend was waiting inside the car, leaving the windows open. As I was so concentrated on not peeing on my shoes, I didn't really notice something around me and went back about three minutes later. As I approached the car, I noticed my boyfriend being kind of alert. I sat down on the passenger seat as he locked the doors, turned to me, and said in a really serious way, did you notice it? I was like, what? Didn't you notice that there is not a single sound in this forest? No birds singing, no clicking noise from the trees or animals, not even the sound of wind in the leaves. Like that place would just absorb every sound of life. We closed the windows and continued our journey without incident. Although it's been a while since then and we're back home in Europe, this experience is kind of stuck in my mind. Maybe it's because we are not used to the American wilderness or being miles away from civilization. I don't know. But there was something special, something eerie about this fact that the forest just absorbed every single sound. I found out that the area around Mount Shasta is well known for mysterious sightings and encounters. I live in a small village in Finland. As a Finn, I am used to moving in the woods and wilderness. I never get totally lost, etc. I hunt, hike, trail run, go fishing, regular country stuff. I have lived in this location for about five years. It's a small neighborhood, surrounded by the forest. There is a path or area where I get goosebumps and feel uneasy. Sometimes I feel like I am being followed or observed. I once saw a shining black column with red dots in that area. I got quite scared and ran to my home. This has happened a couple of times when I have gone through that area or via that path, and I see the nearby barn, but I can't reach it. That way and path are wrong, and I feel like a loop or something. My dog seems to be confused too, thinking that we are walking but not getting anywhere. After some time, 5 to 15 minutes, we start to reach the end of the forest. In Finnish folklore, there is a phenomenon called metsanpeto, forest cover. But this is not exactly the same, because I know or believe I know where I am. This story still haunts me to this day. I was in the woods exploring one day and came across a random old wind-up clock half buried in the dirt. It was probably from the 50s or 60s. I picked it up to take it home, kind of wondering how a clock got in the middle of the woods. I'm in some deep woods that I have explored often for over 10 years. I'm on my way home and came across a small cave that went into the ground, maybe 8 to 10 feet. I could stand up at the entrance, but it got smaller and smaller as it went down into the ground. I had never seen this before and was so excited that I found something new and cool. I thought I'd leave the clock there, go home, and grab some materials to make the small cave fort, a chair, blankets, etc. I was even thinking of sleeping in it, which terrifies me now that I think about it. I was fearless back then. I make a mental note of the general area of the cave. I'm familiar with these woods, so I had a good idea of where the general area was. I go home, but it's dark by then. So I decided to go back the next day. The next day I go back to the general spot, and I cannot find the cave or the clock. I spent hours looking, going in circles. I was so confused because it was large and hard to miss, which is why I was surprised to find it in the first place. I looked for that cave for years and never found it or the clock. I could never find the general area I thought it was in. This stands out to me because I vividly remember the cave. My excitement. My decision to make it afford everything is so vivid to this day, and this was 20 years ago now. I never found that or another cave in those woods after eight years of searching. I was hiking around a lake on an established trail built by the Army Corps of Engineers. Awesome work, guys. Only the strip of land surrounding the lake is protected. Houses and ranchettes are outside of that fenced boundary. I got disoriented somehow. Just keep the water on one side and you'll return to the same spot in 26 miles. And I still don't know how. The sun was in the right place and I never left the trail but two hours later the trail ran back into the lake, but I was several miles behind where I started. Never crossed the boundary either. It still scratches my brain thinking about it. Never walk without a compass ever since. 
this thing happened to me in the past when I was around nine, and I always used to hang out with my oldest cousin, he was seven back then, as we were pretty separated at that time before everything changed when he turned 18. I was spending a night in my grandmother's house, as I used to be her personal dog sitter, and he decided to come hang out with me before he suggested a good idea to go into the nearest forest, which was almost next to her house. We were living in a medium-sized city, but the forest is almost always near buildings in some parts or areas, around 10 or 11 p.m. to just walk around the edge of the forest since it would be foolish to go deep into the forest that late. I nodded and told him that it would be a good idea since we were bored and feeling adventurous, so we headed out and just started to walk towards the edge of the forest, having a small adventure, but that didn't last even half an hour before the weird thing started to happen. I remember when I was standing against a big tree and looking just in front of me while my cousin was near my side, like six to seven inches away from me, and seemed to be searching for something, which is still unclear exactly, but when I was looking in front of me, I saw red eyes staring at me out of nowhere, but they were far away from us. I turned towards my cousin and asked if he was seeing what I was seeing right now, but he just ignored my question, so I turned back to look at the eyes, and they were closer than before. I blinked a few times, but of course I couldn't see anything around them, and they were not getting closer. I only saw trees, and I turned back to him and asked the same question, but he kept ignoring me, so I turned one last time to look at them, just to see that they were even closer and closer. I just kept watching them, feeling a little bit afraid at this moment, and I swear that they started to come towards me even when I didn't look away, so I just grabbed his hand and just ran as quickly as I could with him until we saw the street lamps. After that, I have never seen or experienced the same thing again. Two years ago, my boyfriend and I decided to go camping on Easter morning. The weather was unusually warm and sunny, so why not spend it outdoors? We packed our stuff, got the dogs in the car, and set out for the road. It was very spontaneous, so we didn't really plan where we would set up camp, just a general direction up in a national park, Europe. The forest was breathtaking. We drove up a dirt road along a small river for about an hour. It was a rough ride, and we couldn't find any spots, as on our left was a rock wall and on the right was a river valley. To this day, I say the place presented itself to us. I was frustrated that we were wasting light and demanded we stop at the next turn. We got out to stretch our legs, took the dogs out, and noticed they kept going down to the river. We followed them and found the most beautiful clearing under a river bank, right at a shallow bend of the river. We had a clear view up and down the river, but otherwise you would have no idea we were there. It was hidden away from the road. I felt at home. We found an old stone hearth that had a beech sapling growing in it. I replanted the sapling somewhere safe before making the fire. My grandfather taught me from a young age to respect the forest. Before the meal, I made a small gift to the forest with some tea. It just felt right. The day passed nicely, and as the sun went down, it got very cold very fast. At some point, we put out the fire and got in the tent for warmth. The one thing that stayed with me from this outing was the pure darkness. It was so dark that I had to check with my fingers if my eyes were closed or not. I had never experienced anything like that. It was deeply unsettling. During the night, I could barely sleep. The sound of the river was incessant yet low, like a constant buzz. What kept me awake, though, were the strange sounds around the tent. I understand that nature is weird and has lots of weird sounds. More than once, I heard something brushing on the tent, like someone would trace their hand down on it. Top to bottom on the left, then on the right, then behind, all over it. I played it off with leaves or bugs falling from the trees. I started hearing muffled voices. Sometimes paired with the brushing, other times on their own. There were a few voices, all obnoxiously happy. I could hear loud laughter, singing, and people talking loudly. I couldn't understand a word, but their happiness felt off, menacing at times. At the same time, I felt watched. Something was towering over us and counting my breaths. I felt the need to cower and hide. I barely moved all night. This kept going the whole night. Close to the morning, it seemed to quiet down, and I was able to sleep an hour. I woke up at first light, and I was so ducking relieved it was day again. I felt it in my bones. I felt as if pressure had been lifted, I just felt liberated. At that point, I didn't mention anything to my boyfriend about the voices, I wasn't concerned he would call me crazy, but I felt this urge to shut up. I shouldn't speak about it there. The rest of the morning went by quietly. Just before getting the last bags, I stopped just near the clearing and said, thank you for having us, to the forest. It felt like the right thing to do. Not a second later, a bird started singing in front of us. It was like it was answering me. I whistled back, and it sang back to me. I kept this going for a few more times. By the time we were loading the car, 
the canopy above us was full of singing birds. It didn't feel natural in any way. Those birds were huddled around us, like sending us off. It felt like goodbye. I cannot put it in words, but I felt so. Melancholy, even hurt. For a moment, I felt like I was leaving home, not for home. Once we left the woods behind, both of us relaxed, I wasn't even aware I was so tensed. I asked my boyfriend how he felt about the experience. He said he heard the brushing too, and a few voices once or twice. He confessed that he too felt very uneasy during the night and that the bird thing was very peculiar. I don't know what all those things were, but I know I felt a presence with us all the time. I felt watched. I tried to reason it out, but somehow even the memories about it feel off. The Haunted Forest of Hoyabachu Since ancient times, the forest has inspired fear and nightmares within the human imagination. It has been the setting for many tales and legends throughout the centuries, even to this day within the movies. One could easily be filled with unease when walking in the woods, but imagine what would occur if you discovered the area was home to the paranormal. In a three-part series, I would like to share with everyone several of the most alleged haunted forests in the world by first introducing Hoya Bacius. Hoya Bachu Forest is over 250 hectares of woodland situated west of the city of Cluj-Napoca in Romania. The area is known for recreation sports along with biking trails, but its true reputation is much darker. The forest is believed to be haunted and very alive with paranormal activity. It has been dubbed the most haunted forest in the world and even referred to as the Bermuda Triangle of Romania. The forest was named after a shepherd who disappeared with hundreds of sheep in the area. Ghosts, strange lights, unearthly voices, and other paranormal phenomena that occur within Hoya Bachu Forest have been reported over the centuries. The latest activity to develop over the past few decades is UFO sightings, which gave fame to the woods. In the 1960s, a biologist named Alexandru Sif took several pictures of a strange object flying over the forest. Hawaii Bakru is well known by locals to be haunted, which they avoid entering, let alone its name, out of fear of becoming cursed. The forest is described as bizarre in appearance, with twisted and malformed trees and branches. Those entering Hoya Bachu reported experiencing anxiety along with feelings of being watched. There are accounts of encounters with ghostly apparitions, disembodied voices screaming in the distance, and poltergeist activity. People have told stories of suddenly becoming ill or developing a strange rash the longer they remain in the area. Additional paranormal phenomena mentioned to occur in the forest are malfunctioning electrical equipment, floating orbs of light, missing time, unknown faces and shapes appearing on film, and physical attacks by unseen forces. One of the darker elements about Hoya Bachu is the unknown number of disappearances that have occurred. In the past 20 years, paranormal investigators and groups have descended upon Hawaii Bakru to research and study the forest. Some believe the activity is the result of tormented ghosts trapped in the woods. Others would claim the phenomenon is alien and UFO activity in the area. There are a few that say the forest is a gateway or a portal to another dimension. According to rumors on the internet, a paranormal group had disappeared while an investigation was being conducted, adding more mystery to Hawaii Bakru, which may be falsified as a movie about the area was made a few years ago. About seven years ago, I was at the northern tip of Michigan's lower peninsula, around the Pigeon River Forest. I was driving around looking for my dad's old hunting camp, which was deep in the woods with nothing but dirt roads and old logging trails. It was nearing sundown when I pulled over to try and figure out where I was. There was no cell coverage, so I was using a copy of an old map of the area. The woods up there are both beautiful and very dark due to the thickness of the tree coverage and a lot of dense foliage. I was sitting in my car studying my map when I noticed it had gotten very silent. For a few minutes, the birds and squirrels stopped chattering and singing, but I barely noticed. I was going to head back to town since it was starting to get dark. That's when I became aware of a movement in the woods just a few yards away. Something was scurrying through the field of tall ferns, heading towards the tree line nearby. It startled me, but I assumed it was probably a raccoon, a fox, or something. I watched the thing moving through the ferns, curious if I could see the animal running. It reached the trees, and the movement stopped. I couldn't see anything, and after a minute, I gave up and went back to the map. Then I noticed something moving again at the tree line. When I looked, there was nothing, at first. Then I gradually realized that what I thought was a tree was actually a tall, dark creature, about six feet tall, covered in what looked like short, dark gray fur like a rabbit. The body looked like a ferret or a weasel, very long and slim, with what appeared to be long, skinny arms and front legs hanging down at the sides. The weirdest thing was the head, it had a flat head, like a snake's head. In fact, it was shaped very much like a hogshead snake. The thing appeared to be staring at me, but I couldn't see a face. 
There were no eyes or mouths that I could see. There were some complications around the face, like bulges, which were also covered with short gray hair. I started at it for maybe five seconds before it ducked down and disappeared into the dark woods. The really weird thing? For about 10 minutes, I didn't think anything about it. Like, nothing at all. I just kind of started driving and found my way back to the highway, and that's when the strangeness of the experience finally hit me. I was pretty freaked out. I told one of my friends, but no one else. Needless to say, I have not been back to the forest and have no plans to. This happened to a friend of mine back in the early 2000s. Backstory. There was a woman named Annie Motes who lived on the VA side of the mountain back in the late 1800s. Her husband used to beat her badly, so the story goes that she left one night in the winter to cross the mountain to the WV side to be with her family. At the top of the mountain, she got caught in a snowstorm and froze to death. There is still a grave marker where they found her body. So where she died, there is now a forest service road, and everyone says the road is haunted. They also say if you are lost at night up there, you will see her lantern, and she'll lead you back to safety. Lots of hunters say they have seen this floating light. So my buddy, like me, always used to drive around on the back roads to pass the time, and one night he and his sister were driving down the road near the Annie Motes marker when suddenly this deer walks out of the woods and kneels on its front legs like it's bowing to them. Then he realized his brakes were on fire, which was weird because they were driving very slowly in four-wheel drive. So he gets out to try to get the fire out of his wheel, and suddenly his sister starts screaming and thrashing around in the passenger seat like she is being attacked by something. So he hops in the car, brakes still on fire, and reverses out of there as fast as he can, and they just keep driving until they are out of the mountains. His sister had scratch marks all over her arms and back, it was weird as duck, and I saw them too. He took his jeep to the mechanic the next day to figure out why his brakes were on fire, and the mechanic said there was nothing that indicated they were on fire. My mom and I went camping in the woods of northern Wisconsin. When we arrived at the campground, we were the only people there. Which was weird by itself, sure. Everything went semi-normal until our tent filled to the brim with spiders, and we ended up sleeping in the car. It was about 2 to 3 a.m., and I was wide awake because I was just restless and almost paranoid that someone was out there in the woods. I was looking out the left rear window when I saw a large portal open. I couldn't believe my eyes, so I pinched and slapped myself to make sure I wasn't dreaming. I definitely wasn't. I could feel the pain. As I watched, the portal got larger and wider, about 7 to 8 tall. It was bluish green, almost like Rick and Morty, ironically. Immediately after this, I woke up my mom to see if she could see what I was seeing too. She did, freaked out a bit, and said, don't move and be quiet. I saw one humanoid figure come out with a lantern. He looked around and then gestured for the others to come out. I would say five to six people came out, almost in an Amish Mennonite sort of clothing. They all had lanterns as well. They gathered around each other and seemed to talk, then one by one they all entered the woods in a single file line. The first man to walk out of the portal was the one to go back into the portal. After he got in, the portal closed, and we watched the humanoids walk into the woods until we couldn't see their light anymore. My mom immediately started the car, and we left in complete silence for the entire car ride back home to Illinois. Ever since then, both my mom and I have been avid believers in the paranormal and aliens. I'm wondering if anyone has ever seen anything like this before or experienced it before, because I know this sounds absolutely insane, but I swear it happened. This happened to me when I was a teenager. I think it was the spring of 1998, when I was 14. My boy scout troop went hiking in the Ozark Mountains in Arkansas. I grew up in a very small town in Tennessee, and the boys in my troop were people I'd known my whole life, and we were all very close, knew each other very well, and trusted each other. We'd been hiking for five days or so, and it was miserable. It rained every day, and we were all exhausted, sore, hungry, and covered with blisters. The adults realized we'd bitten off more than we could chew in trying to hike a 60-mile trail, especially with the awful weather, so we'd changed course and gotten off the trail to spend the night on a drive-in campground. The kind of place with hookups for RVs and picnic tables and fire pits slash grills and a central bath house with showers and toilets, it was in a very remote area, far from a town or a house. There may have been a few other small groups there, but if there were, we never interacted with or saw any of them. We were all filthy and wet and, thus, very excited about taking a hot shower. It was dark, and we'd finished dinner. A group of five of my friends, including my friend Jeremy, who, like everyone else in our group, I had known since we were babies, headed up to the bathhouse, which was maybe a quarter mile walk through the pitch dark woods up a worn down gravel walking trail. I stayed behind to clean up, 
and after 10 or 15 minutes, I followed them by myself. I had a weak little flashlight, the old incandescent kind, pre-LED. I remember the woods being totally silent. When I got about halfway to the bathhouse, I could see the light from it off in the distance through the woods, I heard a noise to my left, and I looked over and saw my friend Jeremy standing by an old school manual water pump about 20 feet off the trail. The kind of pump where you raise and lower a handle to pump water up from a well, there was a strange light around him, like the moon had come out from behind the clouds. I was startled to see him there by himself in the woods off the trail. I asked him if he was already done with his shower. He seemed kind of sad, and he said, yeah, it's all yours. I said okay and didn't think much of it until I got to the bathroom. When I walked in the door, my friends were all in there, and I heard Jeremy talking from the shower. All the blood drained out of my head, and all the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I had to sit down before I passed out. My friends were freaked out and wanted to know what was wrong. I told them what had happened. They nervously made jokes about how I must have been smoking pot, this was long before any of us had experimented with any mind-altering substances, but I could tell they believed me. Like I said, we'd known each other forever and knew when one of us was exaggerating or playing a joke. We all waited together until everyone was finished showering, brushing teeth, and whatnot, and then walked back together in total silence. When we got to the spot, I saw that whoever was there was gone without a trace. The water pump was there, though. No one had noticed it before because it was a ways off the trail and obviously not in use. We got back to our campsite and went to bed freaked out. I remember not sleeping much that night. In all the years since then, I've never been able to figure out what happened. Was there a random teenage boy in the woods who looked just like my friend? Unlikely, did I hallucinate it? Also unlikely, who's to say? This happened when I was 10. There were 5 or 6 of us spending the night at my friend C's house. Her parents own a ranch in the hill country region of Texas, and their home was built on top of a hill. Other than the dirt driveway up to their house, the hill was wild land covered in cedar trees. It was a clear, slightly chilly night in maybe October or November, it's been a few years since I was 10, so bear with me. But after the sun went down, the moon was out, so we stayed out playing hide and seek, using the driveway as a base. Their ranch was far enough out of town and well fenced, so her parents didn't have a problem with it. Anyway, during one round of hide and seek, me and my friend G were the last two hidden and we were so good at hiding or avoiding the seeker that the seeker found everyone else, or so we thought, and enlisted them to help find us. We had almost made it back to the road when three of the girls unknowingly cut us off, and we dove down behind a ridge of dirt to remain concealed. G chucked a rock across the road behind them to divert their attention. We were waiting for them to get far enough off the road to make a dramatic rush for the safety of the base when I heard what sounded like a rock getting dislodged and sliding down the hill behind us. I thought G might have done it, so I didn't say anything but she kind of looked at me and asked if I was okay. I was about to reply when we heard what sounded like one of our friends, C, the one whose house we were staying at, calling from way down the hill behind us, help me. We bolted straight up and yelled for the others. They came running back to the road, and we told them what we had heard. No one had seen C since we had started that round of hide and seek. We took them to the spot where we had hidden from them and called out C's name. For a moment, all was quiet. Then, faintly, even farther down the hill, we heard her say, help. I'm stuck. We panicked and ran up the driveway as fast as we could to go get Camille's parents. When we burst through the kitchen door, ready to yell for her mom and dad, C was sitting at the bar eating a popsicle. I wondered how long it was going to take y'all to find me, she gloated. We all flipped out in the way that only 10-year-old girls can. Her parents heard us freaking out downstairs and came down to see what was going on. We told them what happened, and her dad grabbed his shotgun, got in his truck, and went to drive around the ranch, making sure there wasn't anyone on the property who wasn't supposed to be there. He didn't find anything. I've always wondered what we heard that night. We didn't talk about it much, but I know it remained in all of our minds every time we stayed over there past sundown. Someone told me about a teenager who went into the Ocala National Forest to hike and then was reported missing several days later when he didn't return home. A couple of months later, he was found in the woods, and he was like a different person. He appeared to be either drunk or under the influence of drugs, but when he was tested for drugs and alcohol, the test results were negative. Mentally, he wasn't all there, but physically, he wasn't showing any signs of being exposed to anything that would cause this. He kept telling people that he had encountered something strange. It was several months before he was himself again, and he had very little memory of what had happened all those days. I've asked people that I know who live in Ocala or have camped and hiked in the Ocala National Forest, and they have never heard this story. I really didn't know this person who told me this story, 
It was a stranger, so I don't know if this is actually true or not. It sounds like it might be true, as strange and weird things have happened in state and national parks. I do know that over the years, people have gone into the Ocala National Forest and never came out. Some of them were harmed or killed by animals, others were murdered by humans, and some were never found, no trace of them. I've driven through the forest on State Highway 40, and at night it's creepy. Sometimes it's creepy in the daytime. Thank you.